Hey everyone, I'm Elliot Siu, the youth pastor here at CBCCOC, and welcome back to our youth service. We've been doing this the past couple weeks because we're not meeting in person, but that's okay. We're meeting like this. Now, before we jump in today, I want us to try something different. See, we've actually live recorded a worship song, and we're going to try singing it together. So let's just see how this goes. See you in a moment. The splendor of the King and the majesty of the earthly joys, of the earthly joys. He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice. Welcome back. Um, and today we're going to be reminded of what God is capable of doing, the power he has. So let's start by praying and we'll look at our passage today. God, thank you for being able to handle everything we face. Lord, I pray that we can bring both our physical issues and also our spiritual problems to you, trusting that you're able to handle both and that you care about both. Thank you for this time we have to look at your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, today we are in Luke 5, so feel free to turn there with me in your Bibles. We're going to be reading from Luke 5, 17 to 26. One day, Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men were carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up to the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd. 
right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow that speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God and they were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Let's take a look at this passage. We're going to look at these ideas here. So I got a, a question for you. Where do you go when you get sick, huh? You go to the doctor? Maybe you do. Hey, doc, I got this thing. It's bothering me. I don't know what it means. Am I going to die? How much time do I have? Should I take airborne? Uh, maybe you, you look it up online and, you know, find some form and someone's like, hey, try this thing. Uh, maybe you just hope that you got some guardian angel following you around, keeping you alive, hoping that heroes never die. But uh, here we're going to re be reminded that Jesus is the great physician. Jesus is the one that can heal. Not only did Jesus heal this man physically, but he healed him spiritually as well by forgiving his sins. Let's take a closer look at what the Bible says here. So Jesus is there with Pharisees and teachers of the law, all the religious leaders, the people who know the religion, who study God's word. They've shown up, they've got packed into a house from all around. Um, every village in the area, all the neighboring cities, they're all in this, this tiny packed place. Well, the place was tiny, but it felt tiny with everybody inside of it. Um, there's no way in. But Jesus had God's power to heal the sick because Jesus is God. So who's there? Jesus is there. The Pharisees and teachers of the law are there. Lots of them. Crowd of religious leaders packed into a house with Jesus. Who else is there? There's these friends, these random friends carrying their sick friend. A bunch of friends carrying a sick guy. Hmm. Interesting. Dude was sick, right? Um, right now, our entire world kind of worried about getting sick. Maybe you get a runny nose or something. Ever been sick? Uh, what was the last time you were sick? Did you cough? Uh, did you have a drippy nose? Did you stay home and play video games? Maybe. It's kind of like right now, right? <laughs> uh, school. Um, so he needed help getting to Jesus. This guy needed help getting to Jesus. He was too sick on his own to get to Jesus. He was too messed up, too hurt, too broken. He needed someone's help. Some people need help getting to Jesus. Sometimes I need help. I need help getting to Jesus. I need someone to take me by the hand and show me what it means to follow Jesus because I can get lost. I can get discouraged. I could get in need of help. This man, he had good friends. He had good friends who would bring him to Jesus. They wouldn't let anything stop them. They opened up the roof to get him to Jesus. They, they saw this crowd of people like, okay, we can't get through this crowd. They're not going to let us in. All these religious people, right? They're all dressed up fancy. We're just here with our sick friend. Um, okay, let's try going up onto the roof. So they, they haul this guy up onto the top of the building and they start tearing open the roof. You know, imagine in church, we're all talking and then suddenly like the roof starts open. Jesus, is that you? No, it's this guy in a mat. He looks pretty messed up. Uh, the roofs back then, they were, they were made of tree branches and dried mud. It's kind of stuck together. So with some work, you could break them open. But this was kind of risky. Like what if, what if they fell and got hurt? What if they dropped their friend? What if they looked dumb? That's like usually the main thing that stops us, right? Looking dumb. Uh, what if Jesus didn't follow through and wasn't able to heal this guy? Hmm. Risky to bring someone to Jesus sometimes. A little bit scary to give it a try. But uh, who helps bring you to Jesus, huh? Who do you have in your life? Maybe you got a small group leader. Uh, 
uh, maybe your parents are there. Maybe you got some friends and you know that, hey, if I need someone to help me get back to Jesus, I know they got my back. I know they're with me. I know that they're not going to let me fall. But at the same time, I think, I think that God's put people in your life that he wants you to bring to Jesus too. Maybe you're the good friend. Maybe you're the one that God wants to use to help somebody sit at the feet of Jesus right there next to you. Who can you help bring to Jesus? So Jesus saw their faith. Whose faith? He saw the faith of the friends. Wow, that's cool. I want to have the kind of faith where Jesus sees my faith and is able to help my friends. Jesus said, friend, because now he's a friend because he has friends. Friend, your sins are forgiven. Wow, crazy. So the Pharisees were like, ah, blasphemy, blasphemy. You guys know what blasphemy is, right? Blasphemy is saying a lie about God. Blasphemy is saying a lie about God. So here's what they were thinking. Because Jesus can forgive sins, and only God can forgive sins, they realize Jesus is saying he's God. They thought Jesus was lying by saying he's God. Now, uh, in one sense, I mean, the Pharisees were right. Only God can forgive sins, and Jesus is saying he can forgive sins. But they were so close-minded that they didn't realize Jesus actually was God. Jesus was not what they expected, but he was still God. See, they thought God would show up as this conquering, heroic warrior king, you know, kick out the oppressors, establish the nation of God's people, and everyone's given what they want, student loans are gone, um, and they're all forgiven, right? That's not what Jesus did here, though, in this particular case. Jesus was not what they were expecting, but he was still God. Sometimes I need to be open to God doing things that I don't expect. Because most of the time when God does something, I didn't see it coming. So it's interesting. Jesus uh, looks at this guy, right? And he says, hey, you person who needs healing, guess what I'm going to do for you? Your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees are like, hey, wait, hang on a second. Um, interesting. So in the Bible, actually, forgiveness and healing are often linked. Check this out. This is from 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sins, and heal their land. Now this doesn't mean that if you're sick, it's because you're sinning. We're all sinners, but sometimes I just get sick. The Bible is full of stories of people who are following God, but do have rough times in their life. But what this does mean is that when people turn to God, this brings healing. Turning to God brings healing in every part of our lives. Either we're healed here on earth, or we're healed when we enter heaven. But turning to God will bring healing. And in 2 Chronicles 7.14, at that time, God said, hey, if you turn to me, I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to heal your land. I can tell you that right now, our land can use some healing. So we have this linking frequently in the Bible of forgiveness and healing. And Jesus was going to take advantage of that to show them that not only can he heal, but he can also forgive. So Jesus knew what they were thinking, what the Pharisees were thinking when he said, I can forgive and I can heal. So he's like, hey, um, which is easier for me to say? Your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? Because I can do them both. So let me do both. Let me show you that I can do both. He looks at the guy and he says, hey, get up and walk. The guy does. And Jesus is like, look, I can do both. I can forgive and I can heal. And you need to know this about me because this is crucial to understanding who I am. I'm not what you expected, but I am God. Jesus wants them to know that. So everyone's amazed and they're filled with awe and they praise God. Now, to the credit of the Pharisees, they also gave praise to God here. That's interesting, huh? So Jesus has the authority to do things that we can see and even things that we can't see. Jesus has power over both physical and spiritual. Sometimes, Jesus is doing things in my life that I have no idea about, right? Sometimes he does things I have no idea about. In fact, most of the time when God does something, I'm like, oh, huh, I didn't know he was doing that. Cool, thanks, God. 
better than it would have better than it would have been if I planned it or if I saw it coming. The best thing that I can do is to trust Jesus, even if I'm not able to see what he's doing, even if I have no idea what he's doing yet. I need to trust him both with my physical and spiritual needs. Sometimes I just I just focus on one or the other, right? God, please help me with my my daily needs here and now. Help me with school. Help me with this game coming up. Except now it's like a esports. <laughs> um, help me maybe help my parents not to be too mad at me for not doing my homework and playing video games. Uh, parents, help me to have patience with my kids. Yeah, I know that one's real too. Hope you're watching this one, parents. Uh, but um, I sometimes my my neglect the spiritual part. God, grow me. Help me to be more forgiving. Help me to be more compassionate towards others. Help me to be more generous, more patient. Please forgive me. Do we focus on one or the other? Maybe we focus only on the spiritual things, and we don't think God cares enough about the daily life, because he cares about those too. We see that Jesus is focused both on our physical needs and our spiritual needs, and I want to trust him with both of them. Now, Jesus does this miracle, the Pharisees, his skeptics, right, they praise God. Wow, didn't see that one coming. Now, here's what I think. As you go through life, maybe, maybe God's going to use you to cause others to praise God. Maybe God's going to do something wonderful in your life that he wants you to share with other people, people you never expected that would praise God. I've seen this happen before where, you know, there's someone that I've kind of even not even thought about praying for because why would I pray for them? There's no way they're going to become a Christian next week. Hey, can you tell me about God? Oh, wow. I've totally like neglected praying for you, but okay, I will. God's going to surprise me too. Maybe there's people who don't believe in God and they see what God does in your life and they're going to be amazed too. I bet that could happen. So wrapping this up, God can use you to show others his power. Um, he can use you to show others his power both in the things he does in your daily life and in the spiritual things he does in your heart. So is this visible? Do people know what God's doing? Have you shared about it? You have opportunities right now because people are lonelier than they usually are. You can share this message with them if you want. We all need healing. We all need help. Maybe God wants to use you to bring someone to Jesus like a good friend. Or maybe um, maybe you're like the sick guy. That happens too, right? Maybe you need to say, okay, I'm going to let someone carry me to Jesus. I'm going to stop fighting. I'm going to stop resisting. And I'm going to say, okay, God, you know what's best? I need healing. Maybe you need healing and you need forgiveness both. That's okay. That's what Jesus came to do. And that's what he wants to do in your life. So as we're wrapping this up, honestly, a lot of us are worried right now. We're kind of scared. Maybe we've been hoarding toilet paper. Uh, but we don't need to worry about it. We don't need to be super stocked up, um, at least not to the point where we're panicked and afraid. Because we know that God's in control. He can take care of our physical needs, and he can also forgive us. And in fact, he might even want to use the work he's doing in your life to bring someone else to the feet of Jesus. Let's pray. God, thank you for each of the people here, each of the people listening to this talk. Um, God, remind us that you care about every part of our life, that there isn't anything too small or too big that we shouldn't bring it to you. Lord, you want to care for our physical daily needs, and you also want to meet us spiritually and heal us. Show us, God, the parts of our lives that we haven't entrusted to you, and help us to do that. And God, we also pray that we can be good friends to those around us. Maybe there's someone we need to bring to you that you've been working on. Help us, Lord, to be able to, to walk with you in your spirit um, so that we know what you want to do. And God, I also pray that you keep us open to surprising us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. And you can keep up with what we're doing at youth.cbcc.c.org. We got uh, something happening every weekday right now. Take care.